Let's talk Terry Funk. You had a memorable series of matches with Terry Funk. Were you a fan of Terry's before you got to work with him? I had watched Terry work um, in Memphis at the Memphis Memory Show in 1994. And I was amazed at the things he could do in the legend of Terry Funk. I knew about his Japan work. And then when I seen him again uh, in WCW, you know, this, you know, it was him doing his undefeated streak and, you know, me bouncing around. And then when they put the hardcore title on me, you know, the match had to happen between me and Terry Funk for me to get over. And, um, you know, it was a, it was a great honor and a privilege to wrestle with him. We really didn't talk much. And, um, we just went out and wrestled. And when I got a chance to shine on that stage with a gentleman like that, a professional, it showed that I was I was right there with the big boys and I could handle my stuff. And I, I really came out. It was a coming out party for me. So it was a it was a real a real privilege. I was gonna ask you that. What was it like talking over a match with Terry Funk? Did he ask for did he get you did he want input from you or basically you didn't talk much over you said? No, we just went out there and we did our stuff and it was a beautiful it was a beautiful night because like he really just you, you stepped up in grade like there was Hogan and Flannis Funk, you know, and nobody ever puts Terry Funk in, in that category. But if a guy like that trusts you and he knows when you know, and if they trust you and they let you play with them, that's cool. It's just like when I wrestled Kevin Nash, right? How many guys suplex Kevin Nash and do all the stuff I did to Kevin Nash? And I, you know, I was much smaller than him, but, you know, Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, who we both used to, you know, be friends with, you know, I suplexed Bam Bam Bigelow. How many guys remember suplexing Bam Bam Bigelow? You know, right. that's that's some big stuff you do when you're handling these big, big, giant men. You know, even wrestling with Goldberg, as short of matches I had with him, and when he was doing his run, you know, I still had some offense. And then when he he was hit me with a spear, you know, he had to be snug, he had to be tight, you know, and that's just his gimmick, you know, and that's just what he was. And everybody could. You hear everybody today, yeah, Goldberg this, Goldberg that. Goldberg is one of the few special people who got to be that special person in a time of wrestling. And nobody should begrudge anybody because if anybody wanted to have that spot, everybody would grab it. But imagine being that, you know, that guy at that time. You know, it's it's something. It's just something. You mentioned Kevin Nash, that match for lack of a better term, you got your shit in that match. Is something like that, is that, I remember the whole match, I remember he dropped the elbow off the top, I remember that match very well. You know, how much I of that? out of his finish. With the power bomb? I kicked out, I kicked oh, out, wow. I came in, and we ran out of time, but I was gonna kick out again. The place would've went berserk. They were, and Who he, lays that out? Who lays that? The, it, was that. Jim, it was me and Kevin Nash. Because remember, I was working a program with Kevin Nash, with Chuck Palumbo, and I was, you know, I was still working with him. So when it came time to be the main event on Nitro against Kevin Nash, you know, we worked it out, and like I did my stuff, and I sold for him, and that was a, you know, he's a giant man. You get to work with somebody like that, and you handle right. somebody like that. You know, that's something. I wasn't a small guy by no means, but he's still wrestling the Giants back then. And those guys, you know, you got to remember Chronic and Kevin Nash and Goldberg and all these guys. There was six, three, six, four guys right. standing there, you know, and they were all jacked. It was just muscle-bound guys. It was it was something. It was just, you know, you talk about it, even Bam Bam Bigelow, right? You know, Bam Bam Bigelow was a big human being. You know, and he carried it well and moved around. But still, you're moving people like that. That's a tall order. How'd you get along, Kevin, out of the ring? Everything was fun. I never had no problems with him. You know, we always had a, you know, we used to all play cards in the back. So, you know, big card games, card shops. And I used to give those guys the business. And it was a great, it was a great time. You know, no, no complaints, no complaints. I'm going to be up by ISPW and Ring Warriors, uh, Warriors of Wrestling. I'm sorry, on the uh, in June on the 28, 29, 30. I think I'm doing a signing at the Wrestling Collector. Then I'm doing the 90 show in Atlantic City also, and I'll be up there for four days. 
So the old band will be back together soon. And we're going to have a yes, great sir. time. Both are with birthdays of this month. So guys out there, if you'd like to send Mike a gift, send it to my <laughs> house. You're going to send me a gift, send it to my house. You know, and everything will be good. And I'll square it away with him. <laughs> what about your social, me social media? How can people reach you? We are going to look at uh, the Big Vito brand. If you want to email me, it's bigvito at bigvito.com. Go to TikTok, go to Instagram, go to Twitter at the Big Vito brand. You have my YouTube page, the Big Vito brand, guys. Enjoy all the content. It's great stuff. It's great to be here. Uh, press the like button. Give me a follow. I'd always appreciate the help.